In a little more than one minute from now, we will see the four tanks pressurized at their flight level for the last test before the ignition of the Vulcan engine. And in parallel, the electric system are also set in flight configuration on board computer. The electrical power, as for the telescope, it will switch from ground to internal power one minute before the launch, one minute and five seconds before the launch. And we are going to see minus six seconds. At minus six seconds, we will see the disconnection of the upper stage, this big cryotechnic arms you can see on this, uh, on this picture. Then, three seconds before the H0, the initial platform that will give all the information about where it is to the launcher will be released. And at H0, the seven second sequence to ignite the Vulcan engine of the main start stage will start. That will take seven seconds, a little less than seven seconds, where the engine will start up to its flight regime. Once the computer has checked that the Vulcan engine is running normally, and you will see at that point a flame going stable at the outlet of the nozzle, and at that point, the onboard computer will ignite the two boosters that will enable to move the 770 tons of Ariane and Webb. Coming up on the T-minus four minute mark right now, uh, just a couple of milestones real quick. At the one minute, five second mark into the flight, uh, Ariane 5 will go through the period of maximum dynamic pressure, Ma max Q as it's known. Uh, that uh, will be uh, the period of maximum aerodynamic forces on uh, the rocket itself. The uh, solid uh, rocket boosters, which will provide about 90% of the initial thrust off the launch pad, will uh, shut down and separate at the two minute, 21 second mark into the flight, followed a minute and five seconds after that by fairing jettison. That will expose the James Webb Space Telescope to uh, the environment of flight for the first time. The main stage separation or the first stage separation comes at the T minus at the uh, eight minute 47 second mark into the flight. And that will be about a 16 uh, minute burn of that upper stage engine. It will cut off uh, at about 24 minutes, 51 seconds into the flight. And then we'll go into a coast phase of about two and a half minutes to allow any oscillations to dampen out, provide the most pristine environment for the James Webb telescope before observatory separation. We're coming up on the uh, two minute, 50 second mark into the flight. Again, you're going to be hearing critical calls down the stretch here from the DDO, or the Range Operations Manager, Jean-Luc Voyer. The weather is go. We have a green board. No issues being worked. NASA officials, including Greg Robinson on the right, uh, carefully uh, watching uh, the telemetry, looking intently at the final couple of minutes of the countdown, lives have been spent in the preparation of the James Webb Space Telescope that is about to fly. And Beatrice Romero on his, uh, on his side on the left of the screen from Ion Space. And that is the uh, DDO, the Range Operations Manager, Jean-Luc Voyer, as we have hit the two minute mark in the countdown. The flight will be in two phases. You will see the first part of the flight during the solid rocket boosters phase. That will be the atmospheric part of the flight, the atmospheric flight. And the trajectory will be driven by a very, to, to reduce the aerodynamic loads. And it, we will have a very different exo-atmospheric flight after that. And, and you were watching uh, a number of people, uh, VIPs and invited guests, moving out to the observation platform that is right next uh, to the Jupiter Control Center as we stand by for the one-minute call from Jean-Luc Voyer. À tous les DDO, attention pour moins une minute. Top, à zéro moins une minute. Thumbs up from Jean-Luc Voyer. All systems are go. We're inside a minute now, T minus 50 seconds and counting. As you heard earlier, uh, the Vulcan 2 engine will ignite. Turbo pumps will come up to flight speed for seven seconds, and the command will be issued to ignite the solid rocket boosters. The James Webb te Space Telescope will be on its way. T 
T minus 30 seconds and counting. Standing by for terminal count. A tous de DDO, attention pour les deux comptes final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. And we have engine start. And lift off. Décollage, lift off from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. Punching a hole through the clouds, 20 seconds into the flight, good pitch program reported. Trajectory nominal. Vehicle performance is nominal. The Ariane 5 rocket continues uh, to fly uphill in nominal fashion. The rumble of the powerful the Ariane 5 now nominal. being felt here in the control center. 3D animation. We can hear the noise and feel the vibrations here. You're right, Rob. Yeah, impressive. 13 kilometers in altitude, seven kilometers downrange, traveling uh, about uh, 0.6 kilometers per second. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. The trajectory reported to be nominal by Jean-Luc Voyer, the uh, range operations manager. You can see at the bottom of your screen, the yellow line is the trajectory plot, perfectly overlaid over the green line, which was the pre-launch trajectory. One minute, 41 seconds into the flight, about 40 seconds away from shutdown of the solid rocket boosters. Coming up on the two minute mark into the flight, When it detects the threshold on acceleration, the dis not the deceleration, but uh, less acceleration for Tous the... Tous les normal. Uh, uh, everything is okay. Everything is normal. Two and minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. When the computer detects this threshold, it will separate. Separation des EAP. Done. We have confirmation of solid rocket booster separation from Jean-Luc Voyer. This coming at an altitude of 44 miles. The Ariane 5 and James Webb traveling almost 5,000 miles an hour. We have about one minute, five seconds to go before fairing jettison. That'll be the next critical milestone. The fairing is there to avoid the satellite being exposed to high temperatures and also high air flows. And as soon as the launcher leaves the atmosphere, as is now the case, the satellite does not need anymore to be protected and, and web does not need anymore to be Permit protected. Normal. So each kilogram being very important for the performance of the launch, we are going to eject this no more useful fairing. And let's go down to the floor uh, in the Jupiter Control Center to Raphael Chevrier of Ariane Spas. Raphael, so far so good. Hi, Rob. So far, so good. Everything is nominal, as uh, we say, when attitude and trajectory of the Ariane 5 is going perfectly well. As you can see also on the yellow line de la coiffe. on the screen, we had the confirmation of the uh, separation of the two solid boosters and now of the fairing, meaning that we have crossed the limits of the atmosphere. So everything is going super good. And the DDO just said that all parameters are going perfectly, perfectly smoothly. So let's continue the mission. And Raphael, uh, this is a view uh, from the upper stage camera called the Vicky Cam, looking back at the James Webb Space Telescope. This is on about a 20 second delay or so because of the way the imagery is processed uh, here in the control room. There's your telescope ready to unfurl uh, its uh, wings ba basically and begin uh, its uh, journey to a, the Lagrange point, the L2 point about a million miles away from Earth. The trajectory is nominal. 
Trajectory is nominal. The report from Jean-Luc Voyer. The liftoff time confirmed here in the Mission Control Center at 12.20 Greenwich Mean Time, 9.20 a.m. Peru Time, 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time. The Ariane 5 and James Webb, 181 uh, kilometers in altitude, 450 kilometers downrange from the launch site here in Kourou. Flight control is very smooth. Five minutes, 12 seconds into the flight. We have about uh, three and a half minutes to go in uh, main stage or first stage uh, performance. And again, you can see at the bottom of your screen the uh, yellow uh, plot line overlaid over the green line, meaning uh, we are right on course, right down the pike, and a perfect trajectory so far for the Ariane 5 rocket. All telemetry data are now received by the Galio tracking station, which is, clo which is close to here, where we are in Kourou. It will track the launcher up to the ignition of its upper stage, and then we'll, we'll have the natal station in Brazil, Ascension, in the, as you can see on the map, in the middle of the ocean, and the two last stations in Africa, Libreville and Malindi, one on the east coast, the other one on the west coast. And the one on the west coast, Malindi, you can see that the satellite will be, the telescope will be separated more, over, more or less over this Malindi station. And this Malindi station will also acquire the telemetry data from the telescope. You can see both are green, Galio and Dantal on this animation. It means they are expected to receive the, da the data, and it was confirmed right now by the launch operations manager. That Acquisition of the measure by the station of Natal in Brazil. And just confirming now that telemetry is being processed uh, through the Brazilian tracking station. The telescope is also uh, processing telemetry through the tracking and data relay satellite system as it uh, moves further and further out into deep space. All of the telescope's uh, telemetry and its imagery ultimately will be processed through the deep space network in Goldstone, California. We pass the seven minute mark into the flight. A perfect ride uh, so far on the Ariane 5. We have about uh, one and a half minutes to go in the first stage performance. Once uh, the main stage uh, engine is commanded to cut off, it will be uh, jettisoned. And just a few seconds after that, the upper stage engine will, will ignite. And it uh, will be the workhorse for a 16-minute burn that will put uh, James Webb into its preliminary orbit. About 11 minutes from now, uh, telescope controllers at uh, the Space Telescope Science Institute will be sending commands to prepare James Webb for the initial uh, series of commissioning activities uh, that will lead to, to the deployment of its solar array and uh, the initiation of generation of electrical power for the telescope. About 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff, Nominal trajectory continues uh, to be the watchword for the day from the range operations manager, Jean-Luc Voyer, as we stand by for main engine shutdown and separation. Extinction de l'EPC. And we have main stage shutdown and separation confirmed here in the Mission Control Center and the ignition of that upper stage. ESC. And Raphael Chevrier down uh, in the fishbowl. Uh, so far, so good.
Yes, Rob, we have the confirmation of the separation of the main stage and the ignition the of the upper stage. The trajectory is perfectly nominal. This is a very important moment for us because it's always a, uh, a challenge to switch on a cryogenic engine in space condition. And we are now at 220 kilometers of altitude. Speed is a bit more than 7 kilometers per second. As we enter now the second stage of uh, the second uh, phase uh, of uh, the flight, the upper stage is going to power for about, calm. for about 16 minutes to place Webb on its transfer orbit. And right now, everything is again nominal, as the DDO just said. And a short time from now, uh, the uh, so called sawtooth maneuver. Uh, will get underway the, again uh, like rocking a baby in a cradle. This will be a maneuver to keep Webb's optics protected from overheating loose. Exactly, Rob, like a baby in a cradle. Uh, you can see here Webb attached on top of Ariane 5 upper stage with a very specific configuration. Of course, it will be different uh, during its lifetime, but for the time being, its, uh, its, its sun shield is folded and not yet Tout fully protected in the observatory. A number of uh, exhaustive studies have been performed by the mission teams in, in Europe, in the US, on the thermal conditioning inside the telescope and the way the rays of the sun would propagate and interact with sensitive equipment inside the telescope. The maintain this thermal conditioning is really key before separating this, uh, this telescope. And in particular, we know that one face of the telescope cannot face the sun. That's why the, and to produce these right thermal conditions inside the web, a specific roll low has been designed, what we call the SOTUS approach. And if you are, if you are watching carefully to these images, La you can see this animation, you can see that the upper stage is going 30 degrees on one side, then 30 degrees on the other side, going back and forth this way to to maintain this uh, perfect thermal conditioning for the, for the telescope. It's uh, worthwhile noting that uh, after Webb separates from the upper stage uh, of the Ariane 5 rocket, which continues to perform in excellent fashion at coming up on the 12 minute mark into the flight, uh, the telescope controllers uh, will be taking the baton, if you will, from the mission controllers here in Kourou. Uh, the first steps will be the opening of fuel valves, a pair of fuel valves, to start flowing fuel to Webb's onboard thrusters. Uh, they then will power on the valve drive electronics. Uh, those are powered on in preparation to control and fire those thrusters when required. Webb's solar array is scheduled to be deployed at approximately the 33-minute mark into the flight. Once it is locked in place, we'll get the call uh, that uh, electricity is flowing through the array. That call uh, will come from the mission operations manager, Carl Starr, who is at the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. Uh, seated right behind him in that control room is Alicia Starr, uh, a pair of stars uh, helping to guide uh, James Webb on its discovery of the stars. Alicia Starr is the uh, lead uh, engineer for launch and ascent events. Uh, once the solar array is deployed and declared power positive, uh, then a uh, three out of the four hold downs for the aft deployed radiator will be released to prevent binding due to the cool down of the telescope's composite structure. The contamination control heaters will be enabled to protect instrument optics on web from any water ice condensation as they cool down. The actuator drive unit will be powered on. This particular mechanism helps with heater control of the fine steering mirror preventing water ice con uh, condensation later to be used uh, to position each of the mirror's segments. All six reaction wheels and the wheel drive electronics will be powered on for Webb, and that will be the precursor to the attitude control system using those reaction wheels to maintain the proper orientation with the sun, as opposed to using onboard thrusters. Uh, of course, fuel uh, in those thrusters, very valuable. It's a, a limited commodity for the lifetime of James Webb's uh, observations of the universe. We're 13 minutes, 55 seconds into the flight. Jean-Luc uh, Voyer, the uh, range operations manager, continues to report a nominal performance for James Webb. 
And again, uh, Luis Fabregat from the European Space Agency. Uh, how is this uh, trajectory uh, being uh, carefully and methodically adjusted uh, to provide the uh, correct parameters uh, in the final stages of ascent? Yes, Rob, as you can see on this plot, the, the altitude is slightly going down. It's perfectly normal. The large vehicle is uh, really on the, on the line where it should be. This decrease of its altitude, slight decrease of its altitude, will allow the launcher to benefit and the upper stage to benefit of the gravity effect and to increase its velocity until it reaches a thermal threshold. It's about to reach it or even already reached, reached it now and it will go up. And now it will go up and up, up to the separation of the Webb telescope. It will separate the Webb telescope on a highly elliptic orbit, but still around the Earth. The satellite, the telescope will be released, inserted on an orbit around the Earth with an apogee, a very high apogee, above uh, 1 million kilometers. Trajectory uh, nominal, as reported by Jean-Luc uh, Voyer. You see him in that uh, view, 185 kilometers in altitude. Uh, some 4,500 kilometers downrange from the launch site here in Karoo, moving at uh, more than uh, 8 kilometers per second, uh, right on the plot, right on the trajectory, everything looking great. We are, are about uh, nine minutes away from the completion of upper stage ignition, its shutdown, and then about a two and a half minute coast phase calme. before Webb will separate. Observatory separation will be called out. You'll be hearing uh, those calls and the initial calls uh, from Carl Starr, the mission operations manager at the Space Telescope Science Institute at Johns Hopkins through solar array deploy and the declaration of a power positive spacecraft. Uh, you know, James Webb, of course, will be traveling well beyond the moon uh, to a distance of about a million miles away from Earth, settling into a highly elliptical halo-like orbit to so begin no. its astronomical observations. And again, as we mentioned earlier, at the time of observatory separation, Webb will be at an altitude of approximately 864 miles, statute miles, traveling some 21,000 miles uh, an hour. We're about eight minutes away from upper stage uh, shutdown. The uh, stage has performed uh, as planned. No issues reported. Uh, the launch occurring at 12.20 Greenwich Mean Time, 9.20 Karoo Time, 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time on this Christmas Day. Very smooth the launch. Is calm. The velocity you just mentioned is very important, Rob. The velocity you just mentioned at separation of the telescope is very important. It will be slightly below, okay, I give it in a kilometer per second, but it will be slightly below 10 kilometer per second because it's important that the satellite, the telescope, is not inserted on an escape orbit. It will be placed on a terrestrial orbit so that there will be time for the layout for, for the early phase operations on the, and the commissioning of the telescope. And that will be, in fact, the upper stage that will leave this orbit and goes toward an escape liberation orbit. And of course, even uh, though we're still in powered flight, the uh, trajectory, the acceleration, the speed at which James Webb is going towards its preliminary orbit, all modeled in advance, uh, in advance and uh, carefully Trajectoire choreographed to maintain as a quiescent an atmosphere and environment around the telescope uh, for its ultimate separation from the upper stage of the Ariane 5 rocket, which is about uh, six and a half minutes from now. Eighteen and a half minutes into the flight. It's very quiet now here in the uh, control center here in Karoo. NASA officials, European Space Agency officials, Ariane Spas officials, all watching uh, telemetry very carefully.
And as uh, the upper stage uh, continues to burn uh, nominally and sheds fuel, uh, the acceleration uphill uh, for the James Webb Space Telescope continues to increase as we approach the 20 minute mark into the flight. Again, upper stage cutoff is scheduled at the 24 minute 51 second mark into the flight, about five and a half minutes from now. After the cutoff of this main engine, as you said, uh, Rob, we will have a short ballistic phase, a short coasting phase that will, uh, when, when the upper stage will rely fully on its, at what we call the attitude and roll control system. And it will adjust its, its attitude so that during this so small ballistic phase, all the requirements from the telescope are fully met. And that at the separation, when, when there will be the separation, the conditions will be very smooth and as requested for the telescope. The pilotage is calm. Of life. La population is nominal. Today's countdown uh, was as flawless as uh, you can imagine. Uh, the weather uh, was perfect uh, all the way through the early morning hours, uh, through the uh, fueling process of the vehicle. The weather's been a bit dicey here in Karoo over the past few days, but everything fell together on this Christmas day uh, to send uh, a new present to the world's astronomer. 20 minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. All parameters nominal as reported by Jean-Luc Voyer, the range operations manager. Four minutes of powered flight remaining. The telemetry of the launch vehicle is acquired for the time being by the Libreville tracking station on the western coast of Africa. Normal. Flight control is nominal. The trajectory is uh, fully normal, fully as expected as you can see on the on the plot with the red with the yellow plot uh, over the green one. That is the expected one. Twenty-two minutes into the flight. Less than three minutes of powered flight Pilotage remaining. Et calme. Smooth flight control. And again, as we've mentioned uh, before, everything uh, nominal reported by the range operations manager. As we've mentioned before, this is a long ride uphill for the James Webb Space Telescope to put it at the proper position in the sky uh, so that it can escape from the Earth, basically head beyond the moon towards its final orbit uh, for uh, its commissioning activities that will be the dominant feature of uh, all of the operations from the Space Telescope Science Institute over the course of the next several weeks. And the launch operations manager announced the acquisition by, uh, by, by, Lindy, by, the, by the Malindi station as expected for the last for the end of the flight and the last uh, part of the upper stage flight and the separation of the telescope. James Webb is about four minutes away from separating from the upper stage. And again, at that point, uh, it will be on its own. And again, those milestones that we discussed a bit earlier in the broadcast uh, will begin uh, to uh, be followed carefully by the telescope controllers at the Mission Operations uh, Center, the MOC as it's called, at the Space Telescope Science Institute the in Baltimore. Nominal. One minute of powered flight remaining. The upper stage uh, continues to function perfectly. It's been a uh, smooth ride for the James Webb Space Telescope. Uh, 
trajectoire est nominale. That upper stage uh, was loaded uh, pre-flight uh, this morning with 15 tons of propellant for this long 16-minute burn, now about 30 seconds away from upper stage cutoff. And we're standing by for upper stage shutdown and uh, the cutoff of the uh, upper stage engine. Extinction ESC. Tous les paramètres à bord sont normaux. The extinction of the, the shutoff of the, the cutoff of the engine was confirmed exactly as expected with the exactly expected altitude and speed and velocity. So now we, are, we have entered the coasting phase, the ballistic phase, that will last for a little more than two minutes. And the telescope controllers uh, in Baltimore are uh, confirming that uh, all of the uh, function uh, parameters for the James Webb Space Telescope have been loaded on board the telescope. Uh, we are expecting uh, web separation at the 27 minute 7 second mark here into the flight. Just over a minute from now, Springs will gently push Webb away from the upper stage of the Ariane 5. As it moves further and further away from uh, the upper stage, uh, there'll be what uh, we refer to as a collision avoidance maneuver. Yes, yes, Rob, exactly. The springs already will give some distancing, of course, between the two objects, between the telescope and the upper stage. And then the upper stage will leave the trajectory of the telescope and makes a special maneuver to pass the telescope and heads towards a liberation orbit and leaves the telescope on its, on its uh, orbit uh, without any risk of collision and without any risk of pollution towards the telescope. And we're about uh, 17 seconds away from web separation. Séparation Web Space Telescope. Go Web! We do have confirmation of observatory separation. The James Webb Space Telescope, amidst applause here in the Mission Control Center, now taking its first steps in pursuit of cosmological discovery. It was a perfect ride to orbit. And all of the uh, separation uh, sequence events are running in good fashion, according to the telescope controllers. And there is the view uh, from the upper stage camera on the Ariane 5 looking at the James Webb Space Telescope as it moves uh, gently away from its launch vehicle. Fantastic pictures of this telescope. Go web, go web. Yes, go web. Ironically enough, as we marvel on uh, this view from the upper stage camera, this will be humanity's last view of the James Webb te Space Telescope as it moves to its work uh, place about a million miles away from Earth. Yes, you're right, Rob. Yeah. Impressive, fantastic pictures, yeah. Now we'll be hearing uh, shortly from the Mission Operations Manager at the Space Telescope Science Institute, uh, Carl Starr, who will be uh, calling out uh, the procedures that will lead uh, to the deployment of Webb's solar array. No, 
And down uh, in the fishbowl uh, where there is jubilation, let's go to Raphael uh, Chevrier of Ariane Spas. And before we do that, uh, Raphael, uh, uh, a bit earlier than planned, but there is the solar array having been deployed. James Webb now uh, has its array out as we stand by for a confirmation that it is power positive. Hey, Rob. Uh -huh. Je n'entends pas ce qu'il me dit. Il m'a appelé ou pas Il m'a appelé ou pas, Rome Non, il t'a pas appelé. And there it is. There's your critical call. James Webb not only has legs, but it has power as it uh, begins uh, its journey and the commissioning activities to follow. And with that, let's go down to the floor uh, in the fishbowl and uh, Raphael Chevrier of Ariane Spas. This is it. We have witnessed and the confirmation that Ariane 5 has safely delivered the web into space. The upper stage is now being placed on a safe um, escape orbit around the Sun, but honestly, I've got to tell you that these images are absolutely incredible, and it, well, it may be the end of the mission for Ariane Space, but it's only the beginning of the journey okay, for Webb. It's now on its way to the Lagrange point. Congratulations to all the team involved in the flight. Really, there is no words to describe the immersion that uh, is happening right now in the fishbowl. So uh, all I can say is good luck, Webb, and bring us incredible data from the deep universe. At that point, our sequence will continue. Well, Raphael, uh, congratulations on a uh, perfect ride to orbit uh, from the Ariane 5 out of Kourou here today. A view here in the uh, Space Telescope Science Institute. Their work just beginning on a new era of scientific observations. Uh, Luce Fabregat, uh, it was a smooth ride to orbit. Everything went uh, by the book, almost like a simulation, without any problems. And uh, we thank you for all of your insight throughout the course of the day. Thanks to you, Rob, and really a great achievement. I have many faces and names now coming up to my mind, and uh, really you can be proud of what, uh, what was achieved on both sides of the Atlantic Ocean. Thanks a lot to you. Tremendous uh, jubilation here in the uh, control center. You're looking at Jean-Luc uh, Voyer, the range operations manager. Quite a Christmas present for the world's astronomers as the James Webb Space Telescope begins its life heading towards deep space. With that, uh, we're going to go back to the floor now uh, to uh, Katie Haswell. Katie, we did our thing. It's up to you now. Oh, my goodness. I just can't tell you. It's such utter jubilation here on the floor in the Jupiter oh, Control Center. Everybody's been enough. whooping with joy. Yes, the sir, controllers here in the mission three, controllers no jumping up, that. clapping, whooping with joy, people I'll hugging. And I have to say, I... My throat was caught as I saw the, the, the glimpse of sunshine um, on web solar panels as, oh, see, as we watched it heading out into space Would on its ahead? journey to its oh, working yes, zone. Go it's going to take about PCR six months before we start PCR getting um, our deep space observations Happy from web. Of course, the teams have got a huge amount to do uh, before we get to that. And our best wishes with all those teams in Baltimore. I want to get some reaction. Right now, everybody is talking and hugging each other because they're feeling so excited and I totally understand that. Let's start though by going over to the NASA administrator, Bill Nelson. Sophia. Okay. Oh my God, that's great. Administrator Bill Nelson right now looking at these jubilant scenes here in the Mission Control Center in Kourou, the European spaceport in South America. There are the teams, the mission controllers have done a, a fantastic job. It was an utterly flawless launch. 
from the European spaceport here on the equator in the Amazon rainforest. Hoping to go over now to NASA administrator Bill Nelson to get some reaction from him. All stations, seven and a half minutes, give or take, until the sequence continues with our um, ADIR release part one and our TCF configurations. GSCNF filling the JW6 config. The range operations manager has been calling out the milestones throughout the flight today. And the ESA teams responsible for so much fabulous work, great teamwork here to get the Webb telescope into space. And Webb is now heading out on its journey, on its own, with the mission controllers, the telescope mission controllers in Baltimore following those incredibly important first actions and first operations. Charlotte Bezko there, who's uh, responsible for the ESA operations here at the spaceport. We're hanging in there, waiting and hoping to hear from the NASA administrator, Bill Nelson, who I have absolutely no doubt will be as jubilant as everybody here at the Guiana Space Center. Charlotte Besco, who has been working for, I think, most of her professional life in human spaceflight and now heading up the ESA operations here at the European Spaceport. Over to you, Bill Nelson, 